Oh, you're not in Cambodia. Just, uh, just dump a, a paper bag full of $100 bills on the desk of the uh, Nom Pen uh, immigration chief, and that will get this process rolling. You only need three signatures in Cambodia. They'll give you, give you their country and the passport. But look, nothing about switching nationalities has anything to do whatsoever with where Gary Davis and I are coming from at all. Well, Gary, huh? He finally achieved a world without borders. He died. And what follows is, uh, I'm going to paraphrase a quite excellent autobiography, uh, obituary about him. Gary Davis, man of no nation, who saw one world with no war, dies at 91. May 25th, 1948, former World War II bomber pilot entered the American Embassy in Paris. He startled everyone. He renounced his American citizenship, astonished the officials there, and declared himself a world citizen, number one. Well, in the decades that followed, and right up to the end of his life, Gary remained uh, by choice a stateless man. Entering, leaving, being irregularly expelled from and frequently arrested in a spate of countries, yeah, carrying a passport of his own making. And the international press chronicled his every move. Yeah, Gary Davis, longtime peace advocate, former Broadway song and dance man, his quest to abolish national borders drew more than one million adherents to his cause. Now, he died in Wilmington, Vermont, 91. And though in recent years he was settled down up in Vermont, he, he enjoyed riding motorcycles, flying airplanes, and uh, he continued to occupy a, a limbo uh, between citizen and resident. That's what I am, too. I've been in this limbo for almost 50 years. Uh, yeah, he, he inhabited that for 65 years. But Gary said, look, I'm not a man without a country. Uh-uh. Look, I'm in Vermont, huh? Look at the beautiful trees, huh? I'm just a man without nationality. Yeah. Oh, he wasn't the first person to advocate uh, world citizenship. Yeah, famous people like Albert Schweitzer, uh, Albert Einstein, Jean-Paul Sartre, E.B. White. But he was arguably the most visible vocal and indefatigable. Most of these other advocates, they were content to lecture in their prestigious universities. And, but it, like more than 60 years ago, Gary Davis established the world government for world citizens. He made it real, external reality with real documents, not just blah, blah, blah. Documents, passports. Yeah, passports. Yeah, this is what I got in, uh, in India. And, and they were reverse engineered to help people who were stuck. Oh, you need an exit visa? Well, his passport has... You've got one. That's an international residency document. That way the governments can save face and get stop feeding you and get you to move on. Oh, well, that's a residency permit. What else what m might you need? Oh, how, well, there's the residency permit. And this is, oh, you need an exit visa. We can't let you go unless you get an exit visa. I know this is backwards to you, but... Yeah, so there's your exit visa. Oh, exit visa and a passport. This requires all... There's like 13 characteristics of a passport. It's got to have your picture on it and so on and so forth. Even this is so sophisticated, it's, you know, it's got the barcode and it can be machine readable. And 
The background paper is so fine. If you took a magnifying glass up to this, it says the Universal Declaration of Human Rights translated into 27 languages. Even the cover is in five languages. You speak Chinese? Okay, there you go. So yeah, he issued all these uh, birth marriage certificates, uh, even his own currency occasionally. Uh, and to date, more than two and a half million people have these world passports. Uh, yeah, he had to establish, they were so popular, just a special department called the World Service Authority just to, to print them and distribute them. Well, uh, well, was he a visionary, utopian, or quixotic knave? Uh, long debated by the press and the public. and uh, Well, his supporters argue. His documents had genuine value for refugees and other stateless people. Personally, his documents kept me out of immigration prison for the last 50 years. How real is that? <laughs>